What's up, everybody? It's your favorite podcast, favorite podcast, Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Trent, as usual. Hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, I have a couple updates. since this, It has been a little minute, right, since we last talked, so I just want to give my respects to these folks. Uh, Devin Kennedy off the Magic, he, he uh, broke his ankle, or ruptured his ankle. Um, so, you know, speedy recovery there, champ. And then also, Antron Pippen and Brandon Clark. I, I'm sorry, not Brandon Clark, Terrence Clark. I do want to, like, send my respects to their families that's the scotty pippen family and of course clark's fan the clark family and the wildcat family because you know they lost a loved one and then also the Derek chauvin case where you know he's facing up to 75 years up to 75 years justice was served justice was served ladies and gentlemen in the george floyd in the george floyd case again Derek chauvin was the officer who was uh on trial and then we also have kimberly potter who is the officer who mistook her stun gun for her gun. So, or, yeah, her, her gun for her stun gun. So she can face up to 10 years. Like I said, justice is served. Let's keep that going forward. And again, people, I also want to make this note. I, I was gone for a while, you know, because like my grandmother did pass. I wanted to give some love, shout out to her. Um, she meant a lot to me. She meant a lot to me. You know, like I don't, for example, I'm not the biggest Christmas decoration person, right? But I have one thing Christmas decoration was a stocking that she bought me. 29 years ago and I'm 28 or how about there's one picture of me in my house and it's of her and myself granted I was in high school and this was for my graduation picture in college to give y'all a little you know so I just want to say I love my grandma I really do I miss her I wish her I, I it, it's, it's a tough time um you know she did a lot she was like a recent business admin like she got her, she got her degree in recent uh, in, uh, in business admin recently, um, and she was in her seventies, bro. Like that, that's not too common. That's not too common. I, I actually learned a lot from her. I can actually say that. So, like fun fact, I eat healthy, at least a little healthy, and I have some spinach in my fridge, so I'll store it. And I was complaining that it was going bad, so she was saying, "Well, just flip it over, like turn it over." And I didn't know that, and I also told someone else they didn't know that too. So I don't feel too stupid, but you know, she did make me feel a little dumb right there because. It's a quick fix. Like, it's a quick fix, bro. But, I, you know, just, I had some good times with the man. I miss her. Um, Grandma, I love you. Miss you. Uh, we all do. But, um, yeah, you know, she wants me to keep going. So, as a result, and she did text me that, like, she did enjoy my show one day. So, I did appreciate that. I get to hold on to that. But, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get on to the show. Again, Grandma, I love you. But, um, Games of the Week is about to pop off. So, let's get started with the Games of the Week, ladies and gentlemen. All right, everybody, as you can see, I got the games of the week situated. Um, Mark here, you know who Mark is, you know, my football SME, but he likes a little sport, uh, he likes a little basketball. Mark, say what's up to the folk. Tip of the cap, everybody, how's it going? I really need to get like an audio to have them saying like pretty good How about yourself. I need to find that, I really need to, I really need to. Uh, Mark, we got the games of the week, big man. Uh, on Monday, on Monday, I'm gonna give you one. Nuggets versus Lakers, who you got? As much as it pains me to say as a Celtics fan, I got to go with the Lakers, man. I mean, whenever LeBron's on the floor, it's, it's going to be a problem. So, got to go with the Lakers on that one. I feel you. I feel you on that. Even though the Nuggets are without Jamal Murray, uh, you know, Lakers are getting back to the swing of things, come back off injury. I think the Lakers will pull it out as well. Uh, I think they're the better team overall. So, it should be. Not an easy win, but it should be a W for them. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised though if the, if the Nuggets can't pull it out. Now on Tuesday, I got Nets versus the Bucks. Who you got? I gotta go with the Nets. I mean, as long as you got KD, Kyrie on the floor, I mean, there's always hope there. I mean, the way they just put the ball, you know, in the hoop is, is like no nobody's up. So as long as you got them, they're always in the running to win. So gotta go with the Nets. Mm. I actually had to put down the Bucks for this one, like, because, you know, Harden's not going to be playing, or, like, might not be playing. Uh, KD could not be playing. We don't know yet. And then with Giannis, you know, he's also out possibly with an ankle, but that's also listed as day-to-day, so he might play. I just think the Bucks might be able to combat Kyrie better than the Nets can combat the Bucks. So in that regard... I think the I think the Bucks will be able to throw a little bit more at the net. I think the Bucks will actually prevail. But KD playing makes it a little tricky. 
So I, I, I'm just going with the Bucks personally, though. But you know, I, KD and Kyrie could prove me wrong. And if Harden comes back, I'm gonna switch my pick over to the Nets real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear, though, in a series, I would pick the Nets over the Bucks, even if it was just KD and Kyrie. I just got this particular game. That's all. That's all. Now for Wednesday, you know I gotta go DMV, and uh, the Wizards are playing the Bucks. Who you got? Got to go with the Wiz kids on this one. I mean, the way that Bradley Bill and Westbrook, they finally turned that corner. And so I got to I gotta give it to them. You know, as long as they keep playing with that same uh, intensity and tandem, they're going to be all right. Yeah, same. Not to mention the Bucks will be off of a back-to-back. So, you know, I don't foresee a blowout going between the Bucks and the Nets. So, you know, they might have to play the, the, the players like a good amount of a good amount of minutes as a result playing against the Wizards. And they're hung and the Wizards are hungry for that playoff spot. I think the Wizards might pull that one out. So that would be a I think like so we, we both agree on this one. Now on Thursday, we got pro, we got I think the game of the week, Lakers versus Clippers. Who you got? Man, I, I gotta be honest. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm pretty undecided there. I mean, it could go, it's one of those games that could go either way. I mean, if Kyrie, I mean, um, if Kawhi shows up to play, you know, and then you got the wild card PG. If if he shows up too, I get, they could give the the Lakers some fits there. But you know, like you said, uh, there, there's no Sergi Baca. They're still down a couple of people, so I gotta swing the pendulum. I got I gotta give it to the Lakers, man. Sad to say. Yeah, yeah. I, this was like the only game where I didn't mark who was gonna win or lose. I was like, like you, I'm undecided as well, but I have to go with my Lakers on this one if I have to, like, you know, throw some, if I have to make a, a pick just because right now, I think, again, we're gelling, we're coming back. I don't know if PG's really going to, like, do what he needs to do. They're missing surge. So I think the Lakers are just going to catch them at the right time. And then hopefully, you know, kind of make a solid little chemistry push on into the playoffs. So I think this will be a big game for us. Um, now on Friday, we have Pelicans versus the 76ers. Who you got? Got to give it to the 76ers, man. Uh, I mean, you got to give a tip of the cap to the way they reconstructed that roster to where they put shooters around Embiid and Ben Simmons. So, I mean, they're, they're doing what they do best. And so with that in mind, I, I just got to give it to them. Yeah, no, same, same. I think pretty much the 76ers can stop the Pelicans from doing what they want to do easier than the Pelicans can stop the 76ers from doing what they want to do. I mean, you have Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons to combat Zion and Brandon Ingram. Ben can guard Brandon Ingram, and Joel can make it hard for Zion to score on the interior. And Zion's not really a three-point threat that makes him elite. So for me, it's going to go to 76ers. Um, as long as everyone's healthy, it'll go to 76. Sorry about that. We had a. Oh, no, you good. You good. You good. Now, on Saturday, we have the Nets and the Nuggets. Who you got? Still going to give it to the Nets. Like I said, you know, as long as they're, as long as they're playmakers and their best players show up, they'll, they'll be able to, uh, you know, generate that offense that I, I think the uh, Nuggets won't be able to, you know, keep up with. Might be a shootout. Who knows? Yeah, I think it'll be a good solid offensive game, uh, but the Nets should be able to pull it out. Um, I don't think they really have enough to stop the Nets. I don't think the Nuggets have enough to stop the Nets. So that's just that's just my take though. But that will be a solid matchup in like two years, like legitimately two years. Um, and then on Sunday, we got the Heat versus the Celtics. Who you got? I mean, it goes without saying. I'm a Celtics fan all day since. NBA jams came out, you know what I mean, on Sega. So gotta go with them. I mean, the way Tatum and and uh, Jalen Brown been playing, they've been really turning that corner. I mean, it it sucks that it had to take getting booed at TD Garden for them to the, the light the fire in their ass a little bit. But right. hey, once it's lit, let's keep it burning. And you know, so I gotta go with them. But I do recognize that you know the Heat, just like they gave us fits last year, they could give us fits now. So. My heart said Celtics, so I'm gonna roll with my heart on this one. I understand that. I understand that. It's not like you guys don't have a fighting chance. It could go either way. 
I just think the Heat are going to win it because, you know, I still don't think you guys can combat Bam Adebayo. I think any type of skilled mobile big man is going to hurt you guys. So with that, um, partnering up with Jimmy Butler, Victor Oladipo, like a healthy Heat team, that's going to hurt you guys. So I think as long as they're healthy, the Heat will win this one. But, you know, Jason Tatum did just drop like 61 points. Jalen Brown's capable of dropping the 50 piece himself, 60 piece possibly as well. Like they're, they're two quality like forwards. So that's always tough to combat. But we'll, we'll have to see on Sunday. I'll uh I'll text you and see and see. We know win or loss, see how it went. Hey, you know I'm be yelling through the screen, bro. So <laughs> I look forward to it. I got you. I got you. Well, look, ladies and gentlemen, uh Mark is actually gonna be on later on in the show. As you again, he's my football SME. So Stay tuned when I talk about a little bit of football. Thanks again, Mark. Oh, no problem. All right, motivational post, ladies and gentlemen. Who do I have for you guys today? I had to bring up my man, T-Mac, as you see on the screen. And he says as follows, in order to do great things, you have to take on challenges in your life. Now, for me, that spoke volumes. Reasons why? If you want to be big, if you want to be successful, you cannot just be complacent, right? Like you actually have to try and excel in uncomfortable circumstances. So in order to be great, in order to be recognized and be put on a pedestal, well, you have to achieve great things. You have to surpass great things, which means you have to don't have fear. Just go at whatever you're about to tackle head on, fearless and let the chips fall where they may. Greatness comes with a price. So you can't achieve greatness without going through some challenges. And I'm glad that I, I came across this uh, quote from T-Mac. I had to share it to you guys because I use it for myself. All right, Trivia Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. And we have, who that? That's right, who that on the screen? Uh, you know what time it is. I give you 10 seconds to guess who that is and i'm giving you three characteristics three so with that being said as you see on the screen my first person here is started hooping at 16 was discovered by luke umba amute and coined the phrase trust the process you have 10 seconds ready go All right, I hope you got it. The answer is Joel Embiid. That's right. I really hope you got it after the trust the process one. If you didn't, I'm kind of disappointed in you, especially if you're a basketball fan. Now, on to the next one. I got three of y'all. I got three of them for today. I got three of them today for y'all. Jesus. <laughs> now, the next person. This person scored 61 points when his grandfather died in high school. He's also the president of the MBPA and part of a next NBA trade. You got 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, I hope you got it. The answer is Chris Paul, one of the one of the MVP candidates from this year. Uh the Knicks trade really should have gave it to you. That it really should have. It really should have. And if you're a basketball head, president of the MVPA as well. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, the final person. The final person, as you see on the screen. Was the Gatorade Player of the Year in 2008. Was drafted by Philly in 2009. And had a commercial that was like, Quick Ain't Fair by Adidas. You got 10 seconds. All right, I hope you got it. The answer is Drew Holiday. That's right, Drew Holiday. I remember when the boy was, I remember that commercial actually back in the day. That was a good one too. That was a good one too. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all got all three. If not, I hope you got two. If you only got one, that's okay. And if you got zero, come back next week. If you got all three anyways, come back next week. <laughs> All 
All right, Wacky Post, ladies and gentlemen, what do I have for you guys today? Well, one of my favorite shows of all time, I'd say at least top 15. I'm a big TV show, so for me, top 15 means a lot. Now, one of my favorite shows of all time, My Wife and Kids. I was watching it, and you know, it, it's pretty funny. Damon Wayans out there, he's pretty good. It's pretty good out there. And um, MJ, Michael, Michael Jordan, the GOAT, okay? He came on the show and came to show you guys exactly why you might not really want to go up against them one-on-one. -on -one. Matter of fact, I want to show y'all what the uh, what happened in the video. Let's take a look at the clip, shall we? Ah, North Carolina, number 23, Michael Jordan! Hey. <laughs> I just want to say, bro. <laughs> we know that going well. That's not his name. Let's move on. Let's move on. My shoes. Uh, no, I got these from the uh, Jordan store in the Rebel Republic of Cobra Bob Stockadon. All right, let's play. I hope you're ready for this. See, that's the triple threat. Ooh. 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 Next. <laughs> Let me just play. I got this special move. So what? What do you want to play to? Play the 10. All right. I got the ball first. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> I got the ball first. Okay. Ready? ready? I'm ready. You ready? Drop the ball. Oh. Right. <laughs> what? I think this is actually going to be a fairly quick matchup, don't y'all? <laughs> Let's continue. Do it with your eyes closed, and I'm impressed. Two. I wasn't playing D. Okay. I wasn't playing D. Yeah, that's, that's that Joe Dumar D. Look at that ball. Oh. Lucky eight shots, lucky eight shots. <laughs> Is someone tired? No. Okay. Fade away. Oh! oh. See that defense? Yeah. All, th all defense. on you. So you're gonna quit? Yeah. If you quit right now, you're gonna quit in life. Come on, don't quit. Just try harder. I just wanted one bucket. I'm sorry, Bob. Uh, what's your name again? It's Mike. Just like yours. <laughs> Everybody wants to be like Mike. Good luck, kid. That's funny, yo. So as you can see, if you go up against the goat, Nah, it's not gonna end up that good for you. At least in this prime. Listen to this prime. Mike, I can take you now. I just wanna let you know. I I I, I can take you. I can take you.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so my Thursday transformation post. Who am I going to talk about? Who am I going to talk about? I got to bring up Andrew Bynum. Yeah, I'm biased. I'm a Laker fan. It is what it is. But I was looking up some stats earlier, and I noted that Andrew Bynum has actually recorded 10 blocks in one playoff game. And that's a tie for the most in NBA history. And Andrew Bynum, when you remember, what was it, like 10th pick? 2005. It was like a little question was whether or not he was going to pan out. He had the potential. You saw that. But was he going to be what we wanted him to be? And he turned out to be that. At least he met that expectation for like two, three seasons. In injuries kind of hurt him. You know, he would have been like a Joel Embiid, a little bit less mobile though. But Andrew Bynum, very quality. And I had to bring, I just wanted to bring up his transformation again. 10th pick going from not really starting Kwame Brown started over him to now becoming a champion and a quality contributor on the team and not to mention you have tied the record for blocks with uh, with Hakeem Olajuwon and Mark Eaton your name is in that that's tough and unless someone gets 11 which is very hard to do in the playoffs you're etched in stone for a while, big guy. So, again, I just wanted to give a quick shout-out, Andrew Bynum, Transformation. All right, Flashback Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Who am I going to talk about? The Bucks, 1971. Let me take you back. Two big-name stars. Hakeem. Nope. Kareem. Got one. Thought it was. And... Who else was on the who else was on the team? Big O. Oscar Robinson. That's right. Oscar Robinson. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Insane duo. They won the chip. Arguably one of the most dominant like teams. If you at least if you want to go on stats wise, right? One of the most dominant teams in NBA history. And they actually went up against a squad, too. They beat the Bullets. Okay, the Baltimore Bullets, you know, DMV showing y'all some love. But Wes Unsell was on that team. Earl Monroe, Gus Johnson, Jack Martin, all right? And those first three were Hall of Famers. Jack, he made the All-Star team the next two seasons afterwards. So that's the type of team that Kareem and the Big O beat. Now, not to say that the Big O and Kareem didn't have talent on their squad, okay? Because they also had Bob Dandridge, who was a four-time All-Star, okay? Like, he was a young pup on the squad, too. Not when I say relatively young, but he was one of the younger members. You also had Bob Boozer. You had John McLaughlin. You had Greg Smith. So, I mean, you had decent players on that team. But to go up against three Hall of Famers like that, that just lets you know this team was special. And I had to give a highlight a tribute to this team because again it was their first championship and only championship maybe Giannis can rectify this I think they have Giannis in terms of the whole Kareem aspect they just need to find the big O to to bring it home maybe they can get Russell Westbrook who knows who knows that would be a nice little interesting duo to pair up with though it would be very interesting but hey I had to give a shout out to this 71 team and to the 71 Bucks, the greatest Bucks team in NBA history. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're back. Mark, Mark, we're back. Um, the NFL draft just took place, man. Uh, don't, don't, don't talk about the Cowboys. <laughs> we're saving the best for last. We're saving the best for last. But overall, how did you like the draft? Um, I would say I like it. I like the format. I, I don't understand why I was in Cleveland, but maybe, you know, with some connections, you know, Canton, Ohio, you know, Hall of Fame, maybe. That's why they decided to do it there. Um, I also was a little bit confused because they had a lot of players that opted out of the draft. I mean, opted out of the season. So, I mean, how can you get a, a legitimate evaluation when the person was out? whole season. I mean, I, I know this was an anomaly with COVID, but maybe they could have 
pushed it back maybe or done some some other things. So, uh, you know, overall it was good, but still there were some, you know, hair raises there. Okay, okay. Any of the – were there any of the top draft picks that you felt should not have been there? Because, like, like you said, like some people opted out of the season or whatever the case may be. So would that have also affected those top draft picks? Like, oh, not, not would, but did that affect those top draft picks? Um, from what I could tell, kind of. Uh, I mean, you had you had some draft picks, you know, playing this. So for uh, what was it, the, the Pac-12, mm. they only had like eight games. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So how do you get a fair evaluation of a player for good or for worse? You know what I mean? Right. If you're only playing eight games, it could have been hot those eight games. You know what I mean? Or the competition could have been different due to the fact that you have other people opting out at their own various choices. So how can you get an accurate grade? Mm. But I did notice that there were a lot of top players that tended to have some uh, uh, falls and some slides, you know what I mean? So I, it was quite a, a hair reason. Okay, okay. Now, would this have been any... Did this, ha- did this have anything to do with why Justin Fields failed? Because, mind you, before the season started, I was told, you know, hey, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, bop, like, it, it, it might be Trevor... Justin, or it could be Trevor Justin, or it could be Trevor Justin. Like, I don't know. Like, it's 1A, 1B, 1, 2. Those are scenarios. And then he's like the fourth quarterback taken. Uh, so, what I would say that factored into that, yeah, I mean, that, that whole COVID thing, he played less game, which is one of the reasons why there was such a backlash when they decided to put Ohio State, you know, in that whole uh, championship playoffs. You know, if you only play a couple of games, yet, you know, Clemson, they would have to go through the whole gauntlet. You know what I mean? So that may have been a reason also. I mean, who knows? I mean, I know there's different, the top teams, they all have different systems maybe. You know what I mean? And so whereas Justin Fields is the better athlete com- uh, compared to Trevor Lawrence, mm. still uh, some teams prefer that, you know, bazooka arm passer or, or, that, or that pocket presence guy that maybe will improvise here and there. But for a given set, you know, like, hey, just do go through your reach. Versus right. the wild card, you know what I mean? So that's, you know, the top teams, it, it, I guess it went to their offensive coordinator there. Okay, okay, okay. Now, overall in the draft, you said you liked it, you said you liked the whatnot, but like, would you agree, because I was, I, was, I was reading ESPN, and they said the Chargers, the Dolphins, and the Jets all had the best draft picks this year. Would you agree with that? Um, nah, nah, I, w- I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do that. You know, I mean, I, for a lot of them, I agree, but you know, even the Jets, I mean, the Jets, you know, when you pick closer to the front, you, you tend to get the better players. However, you know, what is in the mind of a defensive coordinator when they draft like three safeties, mm. four safeties? Are you going to fill the whole team of safeties? What's that about? I mean, you even picked up a safety in the sixth round that you really didn't need. You know, you still have other areas for team building. So, mm. uh, I mean, I, I get, you know, they did well in the earlier rounds, but they had some some, some head scratchers there as well. So I guess if you're looking at the, the top, you know, portion of the draft, ooh, they knocked it out the box. Most of the top teams tend, tend to do that in the draft. So, okay. yeah, I'll go with it like that. Okay, okay. Is that, do you have like a top three in terms of teams who maybe did get the like the draft correct since you're saying those three uh, weren't it I would say uh, uh, a sleeper bam the Browns mm-hmm. uh, one of the top rated linebackers uh, Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa played um, mm-hmm. Notre Dame literally they didn't even have to trade up for him he literally fell to them in the second round to already build on that speed and uh, you know ferocity that they have on their defense. So, I mean, they got Miles Garrett, they got, now, you, now you're adding a, uh, a joker or, you know, one of those hybrid linebacker safeties that you can just move like a Swiss Army knife. You know what I mean? Mm. Having that, I mean, you, you just, that, that's already a win to an already, you know, team that had few holes. Mm. Okay. Okay. Got you, got you, got you then. Now, so you said the Browns, the Browns. Okay, I respect that. 
And I kind of want them to make a little noise. So I, I low key want them to get like a a uh, Aaron Rodgers and then go up against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. That's that that's me personally. I can't. I, I hope that can happen. He doesn't want to be in Green Bay anymore. At least that's what they're reporting. So, you know, maybe they got it right with the draft picks and help out Aaron Rodgers if they can get them there. So maybe something happens. I don't know. Uh, I got another one for you too. Who? Who you Patriots. got? You got they got the Patriots. I mean, the way that they, they let the draft come to them, and then when they had certain players that they needed to target, they just moved up and targeted them. For instance, everyone was concerned about, hey, you know, who's coming um, behind Cam Newton, X, Y, and Z. Uh, mm -hmm. Will they get Jimmy Garoppolo back? No, they just stay in their position. Uh, what was it, 15? And then they had Mac Jones fall right in their lap. Whereas there's a lot of criticisms and stuff on Mac Jones. He's the perfect Belichick fit. You know, questionable ability maybe on the athleticism side, but rather accurate. Came from a a, 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 a top 10 college program. I mean, he went to Alabama. You know what I'm saying? So, and with that whole rookie aspect to it, he gets his time to sit and learn that system, and he seems to be the type of quarterback that Bill Belichick wants, which is someone who's, look, if these are the plays that I'm running, these are the plays that I'm running. Run this system right here. Don't don't improvise. You don't need to improvise because the read's going to be there. Just find it. So they knocked that out of the park, and then when they needed to trade up, they went and got uh, Christian Barmore, I believe, mm -hmm. one of the top-rated DTs. I mean, they have a way of consistently making things happen. Okay. 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 Do you think... Do you think a team like the Bears also did well with their draft? Because, again, they moved up to get Justin Fields as well. Mm, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it to the Bears. I mean, just, just that move alone, you know what I mean? They haven't had really a solid quarterback in, like, half half a century. It's been so long, you know what I mean? They, they've they had, you know, little spouts of success here and there, you know, right. throughout the 80s, you know, and that, but – they haven't had a franchise, franchise quarterback. Not to mention, they got burned a couple drafts ago when they picked, moved up just to pick Trubisky. And now he's not yeah. even on the team anymore. You know what right. I mean? So, uh, you know, just having fields there is a knockout of the park. You know what I mean? Um, one thing I will say, I don't know if the Bears roster as it's currently constructed will maximize his talents right now. But, you know, it's a it's a it's a building process. So we'll see, you know, how this season goes and what other acquisitions that they pick up to fortify, you know, his position there. Okay. Okay. Got you. Got you. I hope their defense is at least still straight for him to be able to like adjust to the NFL and start to make noise. Cause it would suck if he gets to that point but then the defense falls off. Like I would hate to see that happen because they've been known for their defense for quite some time. So yeah, yeah the, the the back end of that is, I mean, and, and this sounds kind of selfish to say, but it would not be his fault. I mean, that would just literally show your GM, you know what I mean? Sometimes you got to, you know, handhold somebody for them to make the right choice. If he's doing all the reads, he's putting up the points, and the defense is letting him down, mm. I mean, you know, even the toddler, okay, I guess I need to go defense to draft, so let's do that. So, I mean, in one way, having success, it, it'll make it their draft choices, their free agency acquisitions go a lot smoother. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Got you. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, bro. Because I know you want to talk about them. How you feeling about your Cowboys? Like, how you feeling? How you feeling? Bro, like, let me start this by saying I turned the draft yesterday. <laughs> I literally turned the draft. And it was day, day dumb. You know, it's nice out here in Tampa. Like, you know what? I'm going to do something that makes me happy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pour me a nice glass of this Jim Bean and calm my nerves. Because what I'm seeing is a bowl and a glass. Like, think about the biggest punch bowl. And inside that punch bowl is what the... I'm I'm sitting there like, man, why why am I work? You know what I'm saying? Why am I working here when there's work to be done in Dallas? I'm about to submit a resume. Like, what's going on here, bro? Let me lay it out for you. Bam, first first choice, I get it. 
There's nothing we can do. You know, you don't want to give up your draft capital. Right. But okay, Michael Parsons comes to us. Bet. Mm. Okay, good pick. Good pick. Second round comes. The top rated linebacker is still sitting there. We haven't had a solid, for real, strong safety since, you know, Darren Woodson. Right? So I'm like, okay, why not pick Owusu Kormoa? He's right there. He's still on the board. Mm. We pick a third, we, we pick a third round corner. That would have been there in the third round. Okay, some people are like, hey, you know, hey, if you pick him up, you know, one round earlier, you know, it's still not a bad job. No, that is a bad pick. So, okay, bam, we get to the third round. Okay, I get it. You know, we got three picks, you know, bam. So, we got the top-rated defensive interior lineman still on the board. One of our needs is what? Defensive line, interior defensive line. So, what do we do? Just, just, just what do we do? We get a defensive lineman, again, played in the Pac-12. They didn't, they didn't play all their games. So you don't really have the tape and stuff that you need to show. But I, I get it. Okay, he, he, he tested well. But mm-hmm. still, it's about talent, right? So you would the, the, the smart thing to do is grab that top defensive tackle. Then with the second pick, you could have drafted, you know what I'm saying, this guy. But he might not have been there, though. And if he had the physical tools, do you feel like, so I feel like this, because someone produced in college, maybe, because like this other guy might have more potential because of his physical tools. So is that this is that what happened in this type of situation? Like a Marcus Howard might produce more than Cole Anthony, but Cole Anthony is going to get drafted before Marcus Howard because Marcus Howard is a senior and Cole Anthony is a freshman. Okay, so with a skill positions, Yes, bro. Like that that is true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That is that is really true. But when it comes to the trenches, O line and D line, there's not a there's really not a big jump because there's not a lot of growth that you're gonna do. Everyone's gonna okay. be three hundred and fifteen pounds. It's not like, hey man, you gotta put on a little bit more weight. Da-da-da-da. The trenches, that's why it doesn't take offensive linemen when they're drafted. They they usually automatically start, but they might sit on the bench for a little bit, but they end up being in the game. Because okay. there's, okay. there's not that big learning curve or that physical curve that need, you know what I'm saying in the trench because everyone's physical. So I get it though. You know what I mean? I like I I, I didn't mind it, but you should have picked the top defensive tackle first if he's still on the board and that's your area of need. You could project that he might not have been there, but he was slated to go somewhere in the third round. And when you're drafting, you can also just Think about other people's personnel. Okay, these people are a couple ahead of me. They seem they got, they got their D line, you know, straight. Okay, cool. So he's gonna drop. You right. know what I mean? So they could have picked it with the second, third round pick. Then the uh, Kelvin John, Kevin Joseph, good pick in the third round. He still would have been there in the third round. Cool. We get to the fourth round. I'm loving the pick. Jabril Cox. I mean, mm-hmm. literally, we need speed on our on our you know front seven. I like it. I mean, I, I love it. Then the fifth round pick, hey, I'm with it too. We, I mean, we ended up drafting a 6'4 um, receiver. Guy runs a 4'3'9. You can't Damn teach me. speed. Yeah, yeah, you can't teach speed. So I'm with it. That also pushes some of that, you know, that bottom feeder stuff that we have outside of Amari, you know what I mean, Gallup and CD. Now we got people challenging for that fourth receiver spot that also gives us the ability to run more spread, offensive looks. As well as, you mean, you can line them up as in tight end and put them in the slot. You know what I'm saying? So, the, I, I like the versatility there. The background of the draft is the background of the draft. I mean, yeah, Aaron everything is trying to, through it. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Trying to find some, some gold. But the thing that we didn't do is still address the safety need. Unless we're planning on taking one of these safeties. I mean, one of these corners that we picked up, turn them into safeties. Mm-hmm. I mean, if that's the plan, but outside of that, we kind of crapped the bet there. What I also will say, I get that Dan Quinn likes tall corners, and it worked mm-hmm. for him, you know, with the Legion of Boom. Mm-hmm. But you have to consider that that might have been an anomaly. So let's look at the tape first. You, you get what I'm saying? So like, we drafted a corner. I mean, uh, I mean, best of luck to him, Nashawn right. Wright, bro. I, I'm I'm rooting for you. But the taller you are, the, the 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 harder it is to shift. 
It's tough yeah. to play corner. It's tough to like Jasper asked me to play at one time. I was like, nah, champ, I'm good. He was like, your length is good. I'm like, I don't like going up against speedy folk. Like, I'm fine. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying? So you're gonna have that trouble at the next level just because there's faster, they're shiftier, they're stronger, the 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 routes are different. You know what I mean? Like that's the that's why I said skill positions, they have that biggest curve. So I mean, I, I'm I'm rooting for him. I'm just saying he still would have been there, but hey. All in all, I, I give our draft a C because you can't let top talent go through just because it doesn't fit your perceived need. You know, I mean, I, I always think about the whole Sam Bowie and, and Michael Jordan thing. Right. Ha acquiring that extra talent gives you the cap flexibility to siphon off veterans that, you know, okay, while you're producing, this guy producing at a lower rate. <laughs> Quintessential capitalism. I got to go with this guy. Also yeah. pick up, you know, draft picks with it. So that that is the roster strategy that I would take, but it's evident we're not doing that. Mm. So I mean, I just put it in the lower hands. Jesus take the will. I feel you. I feel you. Real quick, real quick. Do you did you by chance follow my Panthers draft picks? I saw a couple, but like I said, what the Cowboys are doing made me miss it. You guys, from what I could tell. Um, you, you, you guys are doing all right, so give me some of the draft picks right quick that y'all picked up. All right, so we had, let's see here. We picked up J.C. Horn, the cornerback. That was mocked to the Cowboys. Guys jumped us there, so that was a win. That's a win. Then we had Terrace Marshall Jr., the wide receiver out of LSU. Brady Christensen, offensive tackle out of BYU. Uh, Tommy Trimble, the tight end out of Notre Dame. Chuba Hubbard, the running back out of Oklahoma State, which, fun fact, I think Matt Rule's wife told him to draft him. Um, so, you know. And then after that, like, is it really worth noting the fifth rounds and below? Or I mean, you can toss a couple names out if they stand out to you. They, I mean, I don't I don't know anybody. I, like, She Smith, Thomas Fletcher, Phil Hoskins, Deontay Brown, Keith, Keith Taylor, and Dablon Nixon. Yeah, if you, that's the top rated D tackle. He doesn't tackle. You guys get value for him. You, you get what I'm saying? LA, that's a better way to draft. Mm. But hey, everybody can't be the Panthers so, front office. So, so what would you what, what would you, what would you rate the Panthers draft out of curiosity? I mean, finding value throughout the round, I, I would give it an eight. I wouldn't give it an mm -hmm. eight plus just because you know that fifth fifth through uh, sixth round outside of Davion Nixon. But the fact that you got Davion Nixon in the sixth round, we got him. I mean, that's tremendous value, you know. Fifth, that, fifth. We got him in the fifth. We got him in the fifth. Oh, in the, my bad. Fifth round, you know I mean? That's tremendous value. You know what I'm saying? The, one of the top ranked tackles that gives instant juice to the D-line. You know, he, he wasn't much of a run stopper, but in this past happy league, you know what I mean? Especially what, what the uh, NFC South that you in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to see a lot of flex looks, a lot of stuff like that. Perfect fit. And okay. Just the horn from the Cowboys, so I'm a little salty there. I'm yeah. happy about it. But look, I asked, I asked, what was your grading on it? So you gave us an A and you guys a C. ESPN gave both of us a B. So I was curious as to wonder like how you want to grade uh, both your team and my team comparing to ESPN. So it's interesting. Like both of you guys kind of agree in a sense if you look at the whole thing totality wise, like. Like you gave us an A, they gave us a B, they gave you a B, you gave a, yourself a C. Like it kind of evens out a little bit. So I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, what I would say for that, the reason why I gave us a C is that yes, man, we made a nice move in the initially, you know, by trading back from 10 to 12, picking up the extra third round. But you have to use those third round picks. You can't just blow those third round picks. You, you get what I'm saying? And we, we kind of just like did that in the third round where there was still a lot of pre other premium picks to pick up. But outside of that third round that we completely blew, we, we, we did all right. You know what I mean? So I guess me just knowing that, you know, there was still top ranked, you know, players on the board and we didn't pick them up for scheme fit or whatever, you know, that that's already at the merit. And the reason why I gave you guys the A is just, like I said, finding tremendous value throughout the rounds. You know what I'm saying? J.C. Horn, blue chip prospect, Davion Nixon, 
blue chip prospect. And you guys got him outside the top 100. So, I mean, that's already finding a needle in the haystack. Okay, okay, okay. So it sounds like there are a couple of good prospects out there. Do you have a prediction for next year's Rookie of the Years? I understand there's offense and defense, so people are going to have two predictions. Not by me. I don't I don't know where they're going, but Mark here, he's my ass me. Mark, who you got so far if you got him? Uh, I, I got to go, and it pains me to say it because they're on, you know, he's on the Eagles. But, I mean, Dev- Devontae Smith, I, I mean, I got him being the offensive rookie of the year. Mm. Outside, if if Trevor Lawrence doesn't show up and do, do what he needs to do, then I got mm. him going to Devontae Smith just because, I mean, that guy's a fluid athlete in motion. I mean, they compared him to Marvin Harrison, and Marvin Harrison is one of the definitions of consistency. You know tough. what I mean? So, was tough back then. You know what I mean? So, so all Jalen Hurst really has to do is get him the ball and the guy's going to rack up yards. So if Trevor Lawrence doesn't show up, I'm saying that it's going to him. Defensive-wise, I got to go with Michael Parsons. I mean, one, reason he's on the Cowboys. Two, uh, he's going to have a lot of opportunities to make plays. I mean, he, he's a, a piece that you can move around the front seven. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he graded out uh, with an 80 and run, run, run defense grade. Also, I mean, He's an edge rusher. He can be an edge rusher too. So I mean, you got now you got someone else that you got to be accountable for because you don't know if they're going to send him on a blitz to make a play or if he's going to drop back in coverage. And not knowing that makes a quarterback nervous. So having that those extra you know snaps to get reps, uh, I got to give it to him. Okay, okay. Now the folks out there are probably gonna think you're a little biased because you picked the Cowboy fan. You picked the Cowboy. Is there anybody else you want to give as like a, a honorable mention, a runner-up, if you will? Okay. Uh, honorable mention, runner-up, even possibly taking it away. Uh, I gotta give it to Sertan, uh, Pat Sertan. Uh, you know, cornerback, one of the top-rated cornerbacks. Right? They were really one and two, J.C. Horn and. Mm. and Pat Sertan, but I would say Sertan has that more uh, instinct, you know what I mean? The instinct and the, and the technical work. He, he might not be as freak of an athlete as Horn, but having that technique, I mean, it goes a long way. And being a cornerback, you're definitely going to have opportunities to make plays. So, I mean, I'm expecting a lot of greatness from that guy. So, I had to give it to him. I can see that. I can see that. I think if I had to choose anybody, it would have been Trevor Lawrence, um, just because it's hard to beat a quarterback. And he's exactly. not going to, you know, like it, he's going to have a lot of opportunities. So it, it's going to, it's going to be tough. And then for the defensive side, I'm biased, you know, my Panthers. So I was going to have to go JC Horn, but like, on a realistic tip though, because he is going to have a lot of opportunities. So I think he, he can make a name for himself, but I don't know the other opportunity. I don't know all the other athletes out there as well on the defense then. So. You know, I'm, I'm just going off of pure bias right now. If he won on my team, I probably wouldn't have picked him. But it is what it is. <laughs> right? It is what it is. Thanks. But, Mark, look, thanks for joining again, bro. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely see you again uh, like sometime soon. All right, bro. Take it easy. Bye, everyone. All right. See y'all. <laughs> I did not know you guys were still here. As, as, as you can see, we're at the back end of the show. No pun intended, but look, hope you all enjoyed it. And before you go, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the IG account, share the content to anybody who's anybody. And most importantly, leave your thoughts and comments below. But I got to go back and play Buddy in 2K, so let me unmute him real quick. Excuse me. Hey, boss, I'm back. Nah, you better catch this word. You know we get buckets around here, cut.